celebrate. I see we're getting responses to the poll. Oh, great. There's a lot of folks who this is your first time with the GP. Thanks for making the time. Folks from South Hilo, South Kohala, North Kona, and other. It's, it's um, Honolulu RCP, so that might be the other. Oh, we have eight out of 10 folks participating. Oh, nine out of 10. One more will get us to 100. No pressure. Yeah, great. The, again, a lot of first time folks. A mix again. So yeah, thanks again for making the time. So we'll give it a little more, like 30 more seconds. I uh, see someone else joined us. Thanks for making the time. Uh, as a heads up for this format, uh, we're going to really be using the Q&A function. And then the chat would be mainly if you have technical like Zoom-related difficulties, just as a heads up. We'll get into that more in a little bit. Um, pretty good. We have 15 folks. Well, all 100% participation. So I think we can end the poll and share. Again, we have folks from South Hilo. South Kohala, North Kona, South Kona, Puna, and other. And yeah, again, a vast majority have not attended any of the in-person or online workshops. And again, vast majority, it's just your first time involved, being involved with the GP. So again, thanks for making the time. We'll continue with introductions. So again, I'm Brent uh, with Hackbed, a small nonprofit Hawaii Alliance for Community-Based Economic Development. I'll start with our team and then we'll transition to the county team. So Mary, can you go next? Hi everyone, my name is Mary Kalihuli. I'm from Makaha and part of our small half the team here. Hi everyone, my name is Corinne. I'm calling in from our office here in Honolulu. Nice to see you all tonight. Thanks, Mary and Corinne. And they will be helping on the back end with tech and uh, some chat and Q&A. Uh, so if their cameras are off, they're not zoning out, probably. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, so I'll turn it over to the county folks. Maybe Bethany, if you want to start and then go from there. Sure. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Bethany Morrison. I'm a long range planner with the County of Hawaii and the project manager for the general plan update. Go ahead, April. Sorry, yep. Hello, I'm yeah. April Supernaut, long range planning, also planning manager. Thank you. Zendo? Uh, go, Janice, first. I'll go last. Aloha, everyone. My name is Janice Hasa, and I'm with the Hawaii County Planning Department's Long Range Division. Yeah. Aloha, everyone. I am Kara, and I also work at the Long Range Planning Department um, for Hawaii County. Hello, uh, everybody. I'm Zendo Kern, Planning Director for Hawaii County. Thank you for being here. Yep, thanks everyone. Uh, maybe Bethany, do you wanna continue yeah. from here? Yeah, just our next um, piece was just um, opening from Zendo. So Zendo can take it away. 
Okay, I'll continue. Uh, again, just really want to uh, appreciate everybody for taking the time to come out. Uh, life is very busy. We have very busy schedules. And taking the time to participate in this process is critically important. Many of you have been probably already participating for many of years. So thank you for your continuing participation. Um, we've been working on this uh, draft for of the general plan, or excuse me, the update to the general plan for quite a while now. Um, we had a draft come out in 2019 after a lot of public outreach, uh, public input. And then from there, we We've uh, collected that input, and when we came in, we kept on adjusting it to come up with this draft, which took really the best elements of the 2019 draft, elements of the 2005 draft, elements of the CDP, and, and elements of climate change, et cetera, and brought them all into this current draft that we're really proud of to really bring out to everybody for your review. Um, this is an opportunity for us to really focus on what we do want as an island and as a county. Uh, we live on an island with a lot of, you know, very unique communities and not all of them are the same. And that's where we have our community development plans so really dive into the details of those communities. The general plan is really the high level plan where we hopefully we can get into agreement on most factors or where we want our island to go, such as, you know, opportunities for our children to be able to stay here, come back home, preserve our culture, have our sense of place, focus the growth where we want it to be, have our open space where we'd like it to be. And that's really the concept of the general plan. So I continue to encourage everybody and challenge everybody at the same time to focus on what we'd like versus what we don't want. If we focus on what we don't want, we tend to get a lot more of that. If we focus on what we do want, we tend to get a lot more of that, which is actually what we want. And that's, you'll see in the general plan, we tried to really draft it in, in the positive framework and moving towards what we want instead of away from what we don't want. And so I, hopefully everybody will participate in that way on focusing on, on what we do want. And uh, again, just really want to thank everybody who's participated in it for many of years. It's been a lot of input. I want to thank the county team for continuing to persevere and, um, please uh, share your thoughts. And with that, um, again, thank you all very much for being here. I'll turn it over to Bethany. Thank you for those opening remarks, Endo. Um, really appreciate you being here tonight as well. Um, so I will go ahead and get started with the presentation. We do have, as Brent mentioned, um, Q&A available to folks to go ahead and type in your questions. And we will answer those as, um, as we can throughout the evening and really focus the chat function on any um, technical uh, support or needs that you have. This is the second of our online workshops. The first one was October 10th during the same time period. And so um, tonight, here we are with October 18. Tonight we'll be looking at um, really completing for objectives for this meeting. We want to provide everybody with an overview of the draft general plan. We want to review the comprehensive review process and provide an overview of how we're offering um, engagement opportunities and how we're taking comments. And then, of course, finally, allow um, people the opportunity to ask questions um, about general plan topics. Um, so for the agenda, we'll go through the purpose of the general plan. We'll look at the process that we've been using to do the comprehensive update. We'll look at the framework that was used to create this current draft, and then we will dive in to actually um, orient people to the draft itself within the platform that we're using, and that will also include the mapping orientation as well. And then we'll just follow up with next steps. Um, and what's available to you guys to continue to participate in. I can jump in with uh, how the workshop itself will work. Um, so we uh, will eventually shift to the Conveo platform, which the plan is, is sitting on to get, uh, and that's been the central hub for feedback. Uh, so this is also a good time to get used to that platform and ask questions about it itself. Uh, in terms of flow for this, the next uh, hour and 48 minutes or so, we'll have, after this introduction, uh, the team will spend about 15 minutes for each of the topic, uh, six topic areas. And as Bethany mentioned, uh, please enter questions and comments in the Q&A function. Um, and uh, as mentioned, the other staff that introduced themselves will be moderating, helping us to call through them to make sure we 
uh, respond to every question, whether it be via typing or answered by a planning staff member verbally. And then uh, if there are questions not related to the GP, the staff will also help by directing you to an online feedback form. And please make sure to leave your contact info so that uh, they, when they direct it to the appropriate county department, those folks can get back to you. That's sort of the flow for this workshop. Um, in terms of uh, protocols, uh, so again, as you folks saw, this uh, webinar is being recorded. Uh, it'll be shared on the different platforms that the county has. Uh, the staff will email all the links that are being dropped into the chat and, and, and then some for sure. Um, I mean, just to reemphasize, the chat function is only for Zoom related questions. Um, and even if time runs out, um, there's still that feedback form again to fill out to make sure other concerns are captured or responded to. And again, feel free to use Conveil um, as uh, this meeting goes to just start putting in your comments on the GP itself in real time. Thank you, Brent. Um, so I will go ahead and get started with the purpose of the general plan so that everybody understands um, what it is and why we need it so badly. Uh, the general plan is required by our um, Hawaii State Revised Statutes, and it's also re required by our um, county charter. And it's to set forth a long-range policy for the comprehensive physical, economic, environmental, and social cultural well-being of the county. So as you can tell, it's very um, comprehensive and touches every uh, way of life for us on the island. Um, in sort of simple terms, it really presents the vision, our sustainability strategy for the future, and it addresses all of the layers um, that we think about when we think about our healthy um, communities. And it provides us as a planning tool to really guide um, decision making around uh, land use development, around um, infrastructure improvements, and also just county programs in general. It's also important to understand um, what the general plan is not. Um, we get a lot of questions about you know, what, what is and is not part of the general plan. The general plan is not a specific um, plan for growth or development. It's not a master plan or a regional plan. Um, those would be really more like our community development plans. And it's also not meant to be a fixed or inflexible document. It's meant to um, to be flexible and evolve as our communities develop. And so the graphic here in this slide just really demonstrates, it's really that broad overarching framework and then every other kind of mechanism and plan of the county fits underneath that and gets more specific. The scope of the general plan is very broad. Um, it speaks to, again, sort of everything that um, is important to our communities from our health and safety, our economy, uh, how we're providing infrastructure, um, our housing elements, and then, of course, uh, how we're protecting our important resources and open spaces. And finally, the land use really looks at um, making sure that all of those things are working um, together. Another way of understanding the general plan um, is sort of from a, a flow diagram. So this here represents the general plan being the umbrella plan of the planning system. And then you can see each one of the other types of plans that we have for our county, like our community development plans, um, our water plan, our climate action plan, those all fit underneath that general plan. And ultimately guide, again, sort of the decisions that are made um, down to the permit level and capital improvement projects or the operating budget. Let's spend some time on the process, but before we do that, I just wanna give a brief history of our um, land use in Hawaii. It is fairly young. Um, this is only the third time we've done a comprehensive update to our general plan. 
And it's also important to note um, within this that most of our large subdivisions on this island were created prior to statehood. And so we're working, um, you know, sort of with um, a land use pattern that was developed without any rules or guidelines. And how can we make sure that those communities um, have the service that they need? We initiated the comprehensive review in 2015, and we asked for um, initial feedback as far as what was important for our community to really understand for this process. And so we got feedback from um, several members of the public. We got feedback from our county council members at that time, and also from our community development plan action committees. Um, then we took that information into phase two and really started diving into the research and analysis around that those topics and those issues that people um, provided us with. And we went out and started um, some initial public outreach um, on those issues as well. Phase three, we um, released an initial draft in 2019. Um, so this draft, again, was sort of released in a public format so that we could gather um, feedback on those recommended strategies and policies. And um, we got a lot of feedback in 2019. We got almost 4,000 comments. And so um, that was really awesome, actually, to get that many comments. But then also it meant that we had to um, sort of go back revisit those, understand um, if there was additional research and analysis that was needed based on those comments. And then we had some other um, things happen. Um, in 2020, they updated the census. And so we're able to provide that um, current information around population forecasts and economic forecasts into this draft here. Um, so that was a good opportunity for us. Um, so now we are in phase five and we're doing the public review of the recommended plan. Um, that uh, review period was extended um, as of today until March 1st of 2024, um, in case people haven't heard that message yet, um, just to allow people more time to really digest this important document and really um, be able to provide the feedback that we need to make sure that this plan represents um, our island's vision. Once we finish that um, public review, then we'll take a closer look and see if additional uh, revisions are needed to address the feedback and present that information to the planning commissions. They will hold um, two separate hearings between the windward and the leeward um, planning commissions, and they will each sort of run their own process. And so it's possible that one commission may have more hearings than the other commission. And once they finish their um, review, they'll make recommendations. And those recommendations will get forwarded as part of the packet to the county council for ultimate decision making on this. Now let's look at the framework that we use to create and organize this draft. In 2005 general plan, um, it talks about having community development plans. And since then um, we've created several for our island. And the work that went into creating those community development plans really um, worked with the communities to understand, you know, what are the values? What are the community values that are really important in each one of these communities? And so for this process, we looked to, towards those plans to understand those values. And what we found was there was a lot of consistency, which was really great for us and being able to create one vision statement for our island um, that really represents the work that was done through those community development plans. Um, so this is our vision statement really grounded in those community values. And the other important component that we needed to address based on the feedback that we were getting was really how are we um, creating this plan in a sustainable way, but also um, really incorporating those um, values of sustainability consistent with our traditional systems of knowing and ec ecological stewardship that we have on this island. So this plan really focuses on creating a balance um, between the livable built environment um, harmony with nature, 
resilient economy, um, interwoven equity, making sure that each each component is really looking at um, equity within our communities and ultimately landing in um, healthy and responsible planning. This plan contains uh, that, that vision statement that I showed earlier. It contains high level goals, and then it gets further um, more specific as we get into the guidelines and objectives, the policies, and then finally the implementing action that it will take to, um, to implement the plan. Before we get into the document, just wanna orient you to a few things um, as far as how it's, it's organized and then um, part of our mapping component. Um, so this graphic just shows you sort of the chapters and sections within our document. Um, so on the left-hand side, you'll see the, the six different chapters. And the other important component that we really tried to address was how all of these sections relate to each other. Um, rather than talking about, you know, sort of land use separately from infrastructure and separately from housing, uh, we decided to put those things all together in one chapter so that you really understand um, how they're related and how they support um, they support the vision for the plan. So you'll see in the Sustainable Development and Resilient Communities chapter that we have um, land use uh, all of our infrastructure and housing and finally how we're going to integrate those systems all within that one chapter so it's a very um it's a very big chapter and very important um, but again we didn't want to really separate out those sections um, so this is sort of how we're organized and then we'll go through tonight and ex expand on those chapters so that you can see them Also, before we get into the platform, just want to um, describe a little bit about the purpose and authority of the future land use. Um, this seems to be a frequently asked question about, you know, what's the distinction here? And so the general plan does provide a future land use map. And that map is really the graphic expression of the policies in the plan that are related to land use. It is meant to be forward looking and it's meant to be um, uh, very flexible as far as like it's not um, parcel specific, but it's meant to give us uh, general guidance about what we want to experience and what types of land use we want to have in our communities. It does not change um, anyone's zoning or their subdivision. Um, so again, it's meant to be forward looking. It's meant to be, as Zendo was describing, going towards what we want. And so decisions around land use um, are based on that future land use map. And tonight we're gonna be introducing people to our interactive platform. We're using a site called Conveyo. And this allows you to um, share your comments directly into the document. It allows um, you to view other people's comments and you can interact with those comments as appropriate. And finally, there's a lot of other rich information that you can explore, including the land use map uh, within that platform. So you can um, scan it here or else Janice can also drop the um, link to it in the chat. And um, I encourage you guys, if you're capable tonight, to go ahead and explore with us as we um, get into the platform. Tonight, we're going to explore six different stations. Um, and this is similar to what we rolled out in the in-person workshops as well. So we'll visit climate change and environment. We'll visit land use, infrastructure, health and safety, economy and housing, and finally our in implementation or integrated systems section. So now I'm gonna stop sharing this. And get into the platform. Brent, can you see that? 
page perfect. Okay, so this is our um, basically our landing page for this platform, and you'll see um, some information on here about how you can share your feedback, um, including some walkthrough tutorials and a YouTube um, tutorial as well. You'll also notice that we have two different projects on this site. Um, we used the same site when we did our integrated climate action plan, um, which was adopted by resolution. And now we're exploring the general plan 2045. So if you click to learn more, you'll be taken to this site here, which is really our um, sort of our general plan main site. You'll see we have a nice message here from our mayor um, thanking everybody for participating. And you'll notice that there are many uh, YouTube videos that we've already created um, just to share information out and hopefully um, help people engage with this. As you scroll down, you'll see information again, similar um, to what was in the presentation about sort of what is the general plan and how is it related to these other efforts. You'll see our process slide, and then um, you'll see this opportunity to participate, which we'll explore a little bit further um, in, the, in the evening tonight. From here, you can go to several different um, pages. This is the about page. We can click here and go into draft review. There's also a button for the general plan maps, online workshop and contact us in case you have questions or need um, some sort of support for operating in this platform. Tonight, we're gonna spend most of our time from this online workshop space. And if you see here, um, we already have our previous online workshop posted to our YouTube channel. So I invite you folks to view that um, because there's good, um, sort of the Q&A is always interesting to see what people are, are asking along this process. Um, and then we're gonna explore these stations. So again, this was similar to information that we presented at the public workshops, um, but just sort of in that digital workspace. So you'll see um, station one here being climate change and environment. Here we have our climate change goal. We have our objectives for our climate change. And then I'm just gonna take us right into the document for that section so that we can explore that a little bit more. Once you get into the document, you'll see a few more um, opportunities to um, engage. And I encourage everyone to just take a take a look, push all the buttons, um, see how it works. That's really the best way to learn this platform is by doing. And so, um, you know, I encourage that. You're not going to break anything, and we're definitely available if you um, sort of get stuck or need help along the way. Um, so you'll see this green button here, which is an opportunity to comment on the maps. We can explore that. It, within this gray bar here, you'll see um, you can open it up to a full screen um, so that that's a better viewing um, stage for you. You'll also see the table of contents, which you can open and navigate to whatever chapter or section you're interested in. Um, page navigation here. This middle button is the download button, and this will download the PDF of the document um, to your computer so that you can uh, view it there. You can print it if you want to. Um, you can share it, I suppose, if you wanted to do it that way. I'm just trying to add that functionality and access in there. The next button is to stop our glossary from loading. So you'll see as we hover over the dotted line, um, we have an active glossary in this document. So anytime you see that dotted line, you can see the definition for the term um, that's underlined there. But you can stop that if it's um, not working so well um, or slowing down your, your uh, reading time. There's a word search here, which you can use to um, enter in keywords that you might be interested in. Let's say you really love um, trails, you can enter in trails and navigate to where the trails are mentioned in the document. And then finally, um, it's, it's um, default is on this comment, but you can also click and just drag through the document if you prefer. And then you'll see this green bar here, which says that you can click anywhere on the document to add a comment. 
And so that's true. You see the plus button here and you can literally uh, click here and provide your comments. It will ask for your name and email information. And it will also ask what district you're from. We're using that information so that um, we can understand what areas of the island we might need to do further outreach with. And then um, finally, you will have to agree to the terms and conditions. We wanna make sure this is a safe online forum for people. And you can type in your comment there and post your comment. Um, once you do that, you'll be able to, uh, people will be able to see your comments by clicking this button here. And this really opens up all the comments that have been received so far. Um, so you can navigate to these comments. Um, you can interact with these comments if you uh, want to leave a reply or if you want to like or dislike the comment. Again, just trying to make this a really interactive platform for people to um, navigate. Um, get back to where I was here, my climate change chapter. Um, you'll also see a couple of blue buttons on the side here. This will take you uh, to the general plan maps, but it opens up in a pop-up window. So it's a little bit small. I encourage um, people to use this, which will open up into a separate browser. And we'll do that more when we get to the mapping. And then here, each chapter is provided with sort of those overarching um, goals and objectives so that you can get an understanding of what we're trying to accomplish within this chapter. Then as you scroll down, you'll see, um, you'll start to see some yellow bubbles. And those are, again, sort of where people have already provided comments and you can explore those if you want to as you're reading. Um, sometimes it's helpful too, because you see other ones, other people's comments and it makes you think of something like, oh yeah, I, that's a good point. I never thought about that. Um, and you might have something else um, to say there. So each, each section is really, um, uh, divided up into a few different things. We have the introductory language, which really just sets the context and the stage for um, the section that we're working through. So in this, clay, in this case, we have um, climate mitigation that we talk about. You'll see that there's direct connections to other sections from here because um, climate change really does touch on a lot of other elements in the plan. And so we put those links here where you can go and explore um, it should take you right to that electricity and energy um, station, which is really helpful. Get us back. Um, so we have the climate mitigation. Then we have the climate adaptation side of things. And again, same similar buttons here where you can click and explore. And I encourage people to do that. Then each section also has um, different challenges and opportunities that we see uh, for those sections. And this is based on um, a lot of the research and analysis that's been done and also um, looking at other sort of award-winning plans for how they were able to address um, some of the issues. And so you'll see that there's a lot of yellow buttons popping up here, which means a lot of people have comments on these, which is great. And then finally, you'll get to um, the goal of this section. And then the flow is really um, following um, objective and then the policies and actions to accomplish that objective. And then you'll see the next objective and the same thing, policies and actions to accomplish that. This one's a little bit nuanced because these objectives are really um, working uh, in coordination with each other with ultimately trying to achieve um, carbon neutrality but then we have some very specific ones about our fleet and our renewable energies to accomplish that. As you get into the actions, you'll see uh, sort of these blue highlighted items here. And this really just talks about what kind of an implementation action is it. All of these require further action. So it either requires um, some kind of program to be developed. It requires a project to be um, prioritized or maybe even a capital improvement to be prioritized or some type of other, um, you know, there's, this one's interagency coordination where it's gonna require everybody sort of working together to accomplish that action. Um, 
And then same, we'll get into again, objectives, policies, and actions. So that is the climate change chapter. And then I wanted to um, demonstrate a couple more things here while we're exploring. This summary I closed at the beginning because it pops up um, automatically. It is our executive summary. And I would encourage people to go ahead and, um, and visit it, explore it, um, provide feedback on it. You can click on each of the elements or you can actually jump to the page in the plan um, where you'll read more information. Um, but let's hide that for now. And then I want to show you the search function. This is a really powerful tool to navigate the document and you can ask um, a variety of questions um, or key keyword searches and the document will provide a general response and then also provide page numbers where you can access more information. And so since we've been exploring climate change, um, one of the questions that we get is how um, this plan is related to the climate, the integrated climate action plan that we just um, finished. Oh, oops, sorry. Can't talk and type at the same time. And then you hit enter and you'll see the bubbles kind of the dots are moving here as it's thinking. And then it provides again, sort of that summary answer um, about how that's related. There's a little button here. You can ask staff if you um, don't think that that answer is appropriate or you, you have further questions about that, you can ask us. And then also, um, it'll provide you the sources of where that information is coming from. So you can either read the narrative here or you can actually jump to the page um, to read where that information is coming from. And then just push the button search again to be brought back into your search and continue exploring. So this is a really powerful, um, again, powerful way to navigate the document so that you're not um, having to scroll necessarily you can just get in there and have very specific questions or things that you want to explore um, rather than having to sort of read through the entire document um, all in one space. So that is climate change. Let me go quickly into um, the environment and then we'll pause for any questions. Um, so for our collaborative environmental stewardship goal, you'll see that um, you know, this is a very interesting section where we really focus on um, that collaboration, recognizing that um, environment is our entire island. And in a lot of places, um, we don't have direct county jurisdiction over some of those things. And so we focus on this collaboration and stewardship um, to really um, manage our resources. So we'll click to explore this again, and it'll take us to this. Um, chapter here. And it's it's broken up in a similar way with introductory language. Sometimes you'll see some of these um, sort of pop-up windows here. This one is really exploring our county charter, which talks about the protection of our natural beauty and natural resources. So good information to have here. Again, sort of our um, environmental challenges and opportunities. These are broken up by the different sections of this chapter. So um, you'll see native habitat, watersheds, stewardship, cultural assets, and scenic character. So we'll have um, objectives for each one of those as we explore. Uh, our climate, sorry, not climate change, our environmental goal. Um, it's pretty, um, it's pretty basic, but it's very, it's very powerful. And then we get into, again, sort of each objective here will cover those different elements. So this one is um, discussing native habitats. You can explore those policies that relate to that and the priority actions related to that. So lots of actions, lots of actions for this one. Um, and so this one would be our watersheds objective and again, similar um, policies and actions for that. Sorry. 
hours. Um, so I'm going to ask it another question here. Um, how are we preserving native habitat? Patiently waiting while it's thinking about that. And then you'll see it uh, provides you that summary. Um, and in this case, it provides you with some of the specific policies that are working towards preserving native habitat. And again, you can explore those pages and jump to that page to read more about that. And you'll see that was our native habitats objective. So again, a lot of rich information in here um, and ways that you can understand this, this plan by just sort of clicking and exploring um, here. I will note that we do not have a lot of comments on this section right now. So I would encourage anybody who has passion or interest in our environmental resources to, um, to read this section and provide us some feedback. And I'll pause there to see if we have any questions on station one, climate change and environment. No questions? All right. Let me get a drink real quick. Not yet. Okay, we will move on to station two. Station two is our land use station. And um, as I mentioned, it's, a, it's in a really big chapter of the sustainable development chapter. Um, but we thought it was important to recognize this one specifically as its own station because it has a lot of um, really good information in here. So you'll see, we start with our land use goal followed by several land use objectives. And then again, we're just going to get right into the document and explore this. As we're exploring here, we'll also go in and look at our land use maps. Here you can see it's organized um, where you can navigate to if you want to learn about urban land use, rural land use, or agriculture. Um, it's separated out into those sections there. And then again, similar, um, starting with that introductory language and moving on. Um, this one has a little bit uniqueness to it that the other ones do not. As I mentioned in 2020, we have a new, um, we get a new census. And so we got updated information around our um, population forecasts. And we were able to include that information here. So a lot of really rich information about our population centers, our changing population, um, housing affordability, um, our shifting visitor industry and job growth. Um, so all of these of course impact land use in one way or another, but um, really good information here to, to read through if people are interested. And then you'll see the um, land use challenges and land use opportunities table. And then we begin to um, explore, there are some, overarching objectives for our land use chapter that um, apply to the entire chapter, not specific to um, the land use type. So it doesn't matter if you're um, talking about urban or rural, we want to make sure that we're maintaining our community character and land use compatibility. So those are all at the top of the chapter, um, the ones that apply to everything. And then you'll see um, that we get further into specifics as we go. This here is um, a change from our 2005 plan where we had a natural hazard section. Um, this has been included in land use. So anybody that's looking to understand how we're um, reducing threat to natural hazards, you're gonna find it in this section here. And then before we get um, into those different uh, land use types, we have the um, introduction of our land use map. As I mentioned, again, um, forward looking um, not changing anybody's zoning, but really getting into um, sort of how how are we um, 
achieving our vision with land use and land use types. Um, so these are broken down by urban, rural, agriculture, um, conservation, and other. And we'll explore these a little bit more in the maps, which I'm going to get to right now. So there's multiple ways to enter into the maps. Um, you can do it at the very top through this way. You can click on the screen button. You can click on this button. And finally, um, the maps are also included in the document itself. And there's a plus button here if you want to zoom and comment. So all of those will take you to the same place, um, but just trying to provide, again, sort of as much accessibility as possible. Um, so I like to use this one. It will open in a new browser window. So please let me know if that isn't sharing, Brent. Um, but I like this one because it's nice and big. The other ones tend to be pop-up windows and a little bit smaller to work with. Okay, so you can see that awesome. Um, so about this map, this provides you some really good information about sort of what are the buttons that you're looking at over here on the side and what do they what do they mean? And there's also an, another YouTube tutorial for how to use this um, mapping platform. And then um, some information here and my email address in case you want to um, ask questions or have, have any issues with that. Let's close that out for now. And just, um, it has basic uh, map navigation tools. You can um, zoom in, you can zoom out, you can pan, um, and then you can search by property address if you have, you know, you wanna go explore your property. There are different base map layers that you can turn on, which can be helpful to explore things. And you can measure um, if you have something to measure there. I'm going to zoom in to Hilo for this demonstration. Um, as we zoom in, you'll start to see these um, blue pop-up windows. And those are um, questions that people have had so far or comments that they've made. And so when you click on something, it will, it will highlight um, the feature that you've clicked on. And here you can see that we've selected multiple things. And so you can just navigate through this. Um, to get to the comment that's there. Um, and here it looks like it was two comments on this one feature, which is really great. People are interacting with it. Um, but if we zoom in, you'll see um, parcel lines start to appear. You'll see our roadways mapped. And then I want to explore what these are here on the side. Um, so for our legend, this will share with you what you're actually looking at. So again, you'll see those survey points here, our roads. Um, and then our general plan land use colors to understand what, what exactly we're looking at here. Um, if you wanna share your thoughts, you wanna put another bubble there, you would click here and it's gonna say, um, you know, where's your comment location, select from map. So you wanna select a feature to comment on and then just gonna choose our office location here and then click back on comment and it will open uh, another browser window, um, but this one is where you will actually go in and put your comment um, for the map. Um, as you're entering in here, you'll see that share your thoughts is required, as is your name. Um, everything else is um, voluntary. You can provide additional supporting materials. Let's say you have a photograph that you wanna share or a plot plan view you wanna share. You can attach that here and it will go um, to our staff for review. And you can also include your email information if you um, if you want us to follow up with you. Um, once you um, submit that, it will show up again sort of as those comments um, in the previous map that we were exploring. But you will note that the name, let's see, let me click on comment again. The only information that shows um, publicly at this point is just the comment that you enter in. It doesn't show um, certainly your name or your email address, um, just the comment there. And any attachments also don't show here. They're just going to the um, to our staff. Um, so that's how you share uh, your thoughts. Brent, did you have a question? Uh, that, yeah, there's some uh, questions tied to the map. So one is why are LUPAG maps now GPLA maps? And then okay, uh, let me let me just go ahead and address that one, and then we'll just move on. Um, so 
our current 2005 general plan calls um, the land use, the LUPAG, Land Use Pattern Allocation Guide. And again, it's meant to really describe how we're allocating land use yeah. um, for our island. Um, but we've had trouble with that acronym and that name in the past when we we're trying to do outreach. And so we're really trying to simplify it and say this is the general plan land use um, so that people understand what that is. So that's the name change. And that uh, 2005 LUPAG information is also available on this map if you want to turn that on. Is there another map question? Yep. Uh, one, uh, the different zones regarding the land use map, the different zones, either the existing zones or the future plan, how do I know what is proposed and what is existing? Excellent. Excellent. Um, so we did get some feedback. This, um, this map, um, can be updated, um, with any information that we need to. And so after our informational workshops, um, we added, uh, as I showed you there, we added the 2005 LUPAG, and we also added a feature um, called Swipe that you can turn on and you can see the changes that are being proposed. So you'll have the um, uh, LUPAG and the future land use map shown here. So again, you can explore those changes. Any other map questions, Ben, or I'll keep going. Um, the, I think Chuck, you kind of answered it, but just to double check, is a listing of some other means of highlighting the changes between the 2005 LUPAG map going to be provided at some point? Um, we can provide additional information, but I would need to know sort of what um, is helpful for people. Um, obviously, as you can see, you know, there's a lot of features in this map. And so providing a list of um, land use designations would be extensive. We have a lot of parcels on our and features on our island. Um, but I'm open to um, to hearing exactly what people are looking for. Again, we made that change to add the um, current LUPAG and that swipe feature to try and address some of those questions. But um, if people have addis additional suggestions, um, you can provide that, um, and we can we can look at how we can make that work. Got it. Yep. Thanks. Uh, and then there's one more about uh, not related to maps, but about public meetings. So maybe we can come back to it. Okay. You... Let me let me finish uh, this mapping there. one, and then. Um, yep. And then we can we can go on. Um, so a couple other features about the map. Let me just zoom back out a little bit here. Um, so they, we've explored share your thoughts. We have other mapping pages in here as well. We have the tutorial, um, which will just take you to that same um, YouTube um, video that I was mentioning. Um, we also have the roads mapping page, um, which you can explore there as well. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit more on the transportation. So just to, just pause on that one for a moment, but know that it is there for exploring. Um, and then again, we had the legend, swipe view about the map and the disclaimer. So the other functionality I wanted to show you was this Conveyo document link. This will take you back into the document to explore more information about what you see on this map. And so if I click back on um, our property location here, um, over there, sorry, I have too many, too many data layers on because it's confusing it. <laughs> um, so when you click on a feature, it will show you some information. It will show you what the um, proposed general plan land use label is, high density urban for this one. It will ask you if it has been revised from LUPAG, and the answer is no here. So you'll see the LUPAG label is also high density urban for this. 
And in some places we have community development plan um, land use labels as well, sort of depending on what the CDP in that area said. Um, so again, I want to explore this. Um, so I clicked on this and it says high density urban, click to learn more. This will take us back into the document where you can explore what does high density urban really mean. And again, just sort of give it a moment. Um, and so this search feature opens up and says, if I own property with land use high density urban, how will my property be affected? Provides you with a summary answer here. And then it provides you again, the page number that you can go and explore that information further in. And this takes you right into our urban um, objective where you can explore um, urban densities. Um, so I think that was all I had for land use. Any more questions about uh, land use or the map? Brent? Yeah, so one from Susan, did you include in the maps any near shore coral reefs as a reference point? This is related to both climate change, mitigation action, and the wastewater slash clean water needs of our island. Um, that information is not provided on this map experience. However, we did use that. Obviously, um, we used a variety of uh, resources for the um, geographic information system. So anything that you can um, explore geographically and is um, publicly available, we used that information. And so um, you can see sort of, especially along our shoreline um, as we explore, there are some components, um, you know, there's a lot of green um, belt here, which is really meant to address some of those sensitive environmental areas. Um, but on the map itself, um, what's available is these data layers here. So you have the public comments, um, we have centers and urban growth boundaries, and then the uh, roads and land use layers. Yep, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sorry if there's background noise in our office right now. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go into uh, station three, which is our infrastructure um, station. And so you'll see this one is broken down into transportation. We'll explore those maps a little bit, as well as um, public utilities. So this covers everything from water to wastewater, to energy, um, and um, green infrastructure, as well as in this section. So for transportation, our transportation goal, again, we have several transportation policies. So let's go explore that section. You'll see it broken down here by, um, again, sort of that introductory language. Uh, we have a public access section, mass transit, roadways, and finally airports and harbors. And so you'll see um, objectives for each one of those here. And again, as we navigate, you'll see um, some comments coming up here. We also have key trends for transportation. Again, just sort of looking at that further um, drill down into our census data about um, where people live, where people work and sort of how that impacts our transportation. And finally, again, uh, challenges and opportunities broken down by each one of those areas. And then we get into exploring the transportation. Um, this one is similar to land use where we have some overarching transportation um, objectives before we get into the very specific um, things like public access. Again, over here, you'll see some pop-up windows, which really like um, different uh, ways of understanding information that we're providing in the document and um, want to explore the maps. This time I'll open it from this window here, just so that you can see what that experience looks like. So again, it sort of opens up in a pop-up window about the map comes on again. Um, and then I am going to navigate to the roads map. 
and then I'll show you a couple of tricks for how I navigate within here. Um, this time I'm going to zoom into the South Kohala area. So we have a lot of transportation connectivities here. Um, so again, you want to open the legend to understand what does all what do all these colors mean. Um, again, we have people who are already providing comments, so you can um, click on those comments and review them. And then you'll see here that red um, is new roadways, blue would be extensions, green would be widen, or I'm sorry, improve, and orange would be widen. And then you'll see we just have our roads layered on here. But something that I find useful is turning on the base map and looking at the streets um, view here, just to give you more, a little bit more context about where things are and other um, roadways and connectivities. As you explore this, you can click on information and figure out what the source of this is from. So this particular alignment you'll see is um, based on the bypass uh, west alignment. And this is a new project for South Kohala. And the source of this was the Waimea Regional Safety Study that was done in 2020. Um, so these sources are coming from a few different places, um, best available information that we have to us. Uh, but you'll see that we still have 2005 um, roads uh, included because those haven't been built yet and are still priorities for our county. Any questions about um, our roads information? Yeah, Bethany, uh, there's uh, Susan asked a question and then there's a clarification. So maybe better if you check it out in the. Oh, OK, OK. Let me open that up. Susan is asking, did you look at the travel times from affordable communities as a metric? Um, yes. So as we were um, just exploring one of our um, goals, I'm going to close this because I think this is not specific to the map. Um, one of our goals is about increasing, or I'm sorry, one of our objectives is about increasing um, transportation connectivity. And that comes in a variety of ways, um, but really looking at um, making sure that we're providing um, opportunities for transportation based on that affordable um, component, because many of our af more affordable lots are located outside of our urban areas. And so people are either relying on their own vehicles for transportation or they're relying on um, public transit. And so really um, making sure that we're providing as many opportunities as possible for that. Um, but then also how can we look at our land use and make sure that we're um, providing um, land use in those communities so that they don't have to always necessarily travel long distances. And what I mean by that is if we provide for um, some opportunity for commercial or multifamily residential um, uses within our communities, people might not have to travel um, a long distance to go get a gallon of milk if they run out. Um, and so that's sort of on that affordability front is like, how can we make sure that people aren't spending um, a lot of um, energy, uh, gas money and time um, having to travel to reach goods and services? I hope I provided that answer for you, Susan. And yes, um, just to drill down a little bit farther, the travel time from Hilo to Pahoa um, is quite lengthy and um, certainly we look at, if I open those maps again, we can explore some of the opportunities to try and alleviate and create additional connectivity um, for that area. Let's get to that. Okay. Um, so you can see here, there's a lot of um, places where we're trying to provide some relief for that traffic between Hilo and um, Puna there. Okay. Yep, and then uh, thanks for jumping through the Q&A. Uh, Brad is asking, do you have maps of plantation roads? It would be helpful for identifying and prioritizing disaster slash resilient connectivity. 
Great. Um, I, I don't think we have um, plantation roads in this particular layer if we look at sort of what we have um, built in, um, but certainly that could be something that we could add on. And I think as it comes to um, emergency preparedness, we can explore the document um, here and ask about evacuation routes because that has definitely come up as something um, important to many communities and just see sort of where in the document we talk about that. Right, thanks, Bethany. Yeah, so, um, so you'll see again, sort of an answer to um, the different play ways that we're talking about evacuation routes and then you can um, really dive in and jump to those pages to understand um, what we're talking about there. So I got a little bit off of our transportation, but I think that was a really good, good question. Uh, we also have, you know, different tables throughout this document that will explore um, different information. And so here we're exploring um, public access, for example, and really, you know, what we want that spacing to be at for our access for our communities. And so it sort of depends on what the resources that we're trying to access and what type of land use we have. But you'll see, you know, where we again, sort of where we want that connection to our shoreline. Um, versus some of our, our mountain areas. So good, you know, different ways again to explore in the document. Um, there's different tables and, and a variety of things to, to look at. Um, and then this is sort of our mass transit. Uh, we worked with their office quite a bit on this to just understand where they are and prioritizing things so that we can make sure that this plan is actually implementable. Um, so that was another component is just doing a lot of um, departmental outreach before we presented this to the public um, so that you can understand that um, Mass Transit has reviewed these and already provided their input on this as well. Any questions on transportation, Brent? Uh, so let's see. There's uh, one from Cindy. Due to job issues that is not in, in our control, how can this work for people in Ocean View, Kilo, Kau, et cetera? Yeah. So I, I think a similar um, question to what Susan was asking about um, for, for Puna, where we have our communities um, that are, um, again, sort of were created before we had any land use rules in place and we're trying to provide um, services for those communities. So in transportation, it's, explicitly we look at um, there's a all kinds of mobility um, opportunities Let's see if I can navigate to um, well actually I can just ask the document um, what types of transportation are we prioritizing hopefully I spelled that right um, so in some of the communities, it doesn't necessarily mean a large um, bus to navigate and provide um, pickup. It could be small um, types of transportation, um, transit to take people to doctor's offices and things like that. And so again, sort of working with our um, mass transit to make sure that our rural communities have that connectivity. And then also, as I mentioned, in land use, just really looking at how can we provide, um, you know, so for Ocean View, I know you guys have um, some commercial activity there. Um, so again, you don't have to travel far distances, hopefully, to be able to access um, goods and services um, without needing um, to, to transport uh, long distance. And maybe yeah, I can just, that, that. yeah, I can just explore one more quick thing in the maps to demonstrate that as well. Um, but I didn't touch on yet. So let's just go to ocean view here. Um, so you'll see again, sort of the legend being um, this designation as rural, which is really um, just 
uh, honoring sort of how the community um, is developed um, really is sort of these rural lots that are um, connected to each other. And then we have sort of these commercial nodes um, along the highway. But another thing that we can look at is um, the layers, the centers and our urban growth boundary. Um, so we have um, information around our centers. And if you click on that center here for Ocean View, you'll understand um, really that we look to that as a neighborhood urban center. And so um, within the document, we can explore what does it mean to be a neighborhood urban center? And it talks about, again, sort of providing those um, opportunities and space for, it could be um, commercial activity, it could be multifamily housing, um, services certainly um, that fit into that. So again, um, the community of Ocean View, you know, can come to this center and, and hopefully um, access a lot of the, um, the needs that it has without having to travel to, um, to Kona or um, even Na'alehu um, to access those. So the centers is really good. We worked with our community development plans to understand um, sort of the proposed centers for our island. Um, so here you'll see in Ka'u what those centers look like. Um, Puna, you'll see we have um, similar where we're trying to provide those centers within the um, larger subdivisions again, so that people aren't having to travel long distances to access um, some of our goods and services. Right. Um, I'm going to move quickly into um, our utilities just for the sake of time. Um, I mentioned, um, there is a, oh, go ahead. Sorry, there is a question from Chuck around, um, is it feasible to identify known trails and roads that existed uh, in eight, sorry, uh, tied to the Highways Act of 1892 that has not been conveyed from state ownership? Um, we have done some of that work with our public access um, program, um, working with our partners like Naala Hele, who have um, some access to that information. However, um, those maps are still not a complete um, complete picture of that, as far as I understand. Um, so yes, I think we can try and think about how we can include what we have, but we just know that that information is still not complete um, as far as I know. Yep, thanks, Bethany. Yeah, our public utilities um, really covers, you know, every range from um, the private electricity utility, um, telecommunications, telecommunications and broadband, um, drinking water, wastewater, and finally our stormwater green infrastructure. So this is also a pretty big um, chapter that, again, um, we're sort of looking for people's feedback on. Um, but just know, too, that we did, um, we did go through this with the departments as well to get their feedback before this was released. Um, so... Um, one of the things I want to explore in this one is, let's see if I can just get to that quickly. Um, again, there's sort of, sort of some overarching objectives about just making sure that we're being efficient um, with our uh, infrastructure system. So this applies to all types of infrastructure, um, and then we'll get into sort of the specific ones. Um, electricity and renewable energy we know is very important, and as I mentioned, it's um, it is connected to our climate change section. So that will take you here as well as we're striving towards that um, energy self-sufficiency. Um, so again, as you see here, there's not a lot of comments, um, again, sort of welcoming those. Um, telecommunications and broadband has become a very important um, section for our plan, especially um, with the lessons we learned from COVID. And even tonight, you know, we're connecting um, across the island on this platform. And hopefully everybody has a strong enough um, network to be able to um, to watch, watch the video and participate. But I uh, really just wanna focus our energy um, to make sure that that is available to everyone. So a lot of work around 
Um, what's the county's role in um, expanding broadband and investing? Um, so you'll see some information there on our policies, but then you're also going to see a lot of uh, actions around coordination um, to really address who actually um, will do the work. Drinking water. Um, so we tried to separate these out um, just for the sake of understanding, but another um, really important component to this is um, is our integrated resource management as far as water. Um, so one water has become a really good way of looking at how we utilize water, whether it's um, groundwater, uh, rainwater, wastewater, any uh, stormwater, all of our water, just, just trying to um, treat it as a resource rather than something that needs to be removed or, um, or done, sort of gotten rid of. Um, so you'll see some of those components um, popping up in this plan around one water. And it really does require a lot of collaboration um, between all of our different utility um, departments to really think through um, how to do that effectively. And let's see, um, there's um, some standards here about how we look at um, domestic consumption. Again, worked with our Department of Water Supply to really understand, uh, you know, what is um, what is appropriate for how much water use um, we can expect. And then um, our wastewater systems. As you know, we don't have uh, wastewater throughout our our island and so this is another area where we're sort of focusing on our urban growth um, areas to understand you know how we can um, provide for those areas as well as any um, environmentally sensitive areas um, so worked with um, environmental management on those again one water um, components sprinkled in here and then you'll see the same as we get into our stormwater and green infrastructure any questions about our public utilities, Ben? Uh, there is a question from Susan tied to wastewater. So on the okay, map perfect. here, uh, do you have a layer that shows the wastewater processing plants and what neighborhoods and streets are connected to which plants? I, again, so I don't have that information on this platform. I do believe that information is provided um, and maybe if you get us your contact information, um, Janice, if you can drop the link for that follow-up um, form, what we can do is get that information to you from an, our environmental management department, um, because I know they have a lot of GIS information um, that they provide. Yep, thanks, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Um, Susan, I guess, asked a related uh, question related to working with DOH on getting alternative processing into the code. Alternative processing. Sorry, let me just read that so I can. Um, it, uh, Susan, can you can you clarify? Maybe are we talking about um, different individual um, wastewater systems? Is that what you mean by this? If so, let's explore that a little bit. You said uh, technologies and then, yes. Perfect, know. perfect. Okay, so yeah, we're trying to really think about um, being innovative. Um, see, what, what, see what happens if I type this into the <laughs> search. Um, and one of the ways um, that we know of is because the Department of Health really regulates um, individual wastewater systems. And so working with their office to really um, advocate for that innovation is gonna be really important for us. So hopefully that's um, the information. So innovative wastewater solutions and technology upgrades, um, green infrastructure um, and gray infrastructure as far as irrigation, let's just explore this a little bit and see what we find here. 
So that's in one of our opportunities and challenges. It's going to be the same information. Hmm. Interesting. What I was looking for was the advocating to DOH um, steps that we have in here. Might even be in collaboration with the Department of Health wastewater branch, um, amend a certain code. Um, so there's that one in there. Um, in collaboration with Department of Wastewater Branch, reevaluate um, certain components, collaborate with Department of Health to advance progressive wastewater technology and regulations. So I think that's probably the one you're looking for, Susan. Um, so we definitely have that in here um, as a priority action and welcome any feedback on that. Uh, she did say, yippee. Glad to see you're aware of meeting to DOH on this priority. Absolutely. Okay, I think um, I will turn this over to Janice is going to help us navigate the rest of the stations, um, but I will remain obviously here answering questions as they come up. So let me stop share. And as you folks transition, uh, Janice, uh, Chuck has a question in the Q&A, but I think it's related to, it's up, uh, like it's related to implementation. So I know that'll come up uh, near the end. Okay. Just okay. so Chuck knows that we'll get to it in a little bit. Okay, just checking Brent and Bethany and the team, can you all see my screen? So the next station focuses on health and safety. Um, this really focuses on our county's public facilities and services, which are vital to our public infrastructure. Um, so just brief overview of what this station contains. We have our high level goal here. The first goal, there's actually two goals in here. The first one really focuses on having safe and healthy communities. Um, and the second goal, second goal here, uh, focuses on the actual physical infrastructure um, and how do we maintain that now and in the future. So in this public facilities and services section, you can find it in section four of the sustainable development and resilient communities chapter. Um, and we mainly talk about law enforcement and public safety, sanitation and waste management, education, parks and recreation and community health and wellness. So let's just take a look in the document. So again, we have our introduction and then we get into the specific um, types of public facilities and services. Okay, um, and then some of the topics of interest we've been getting are around um, how are we addressing safe routes to school, uh, wildfire, how we how is the plan addressing that, and how are we prioritizing recycling? So as an example, we can use the search tool and we can ask um, how are we addressing safe routes to school? And this goes hand in hand with some of our infrastructure elements. So some of the transportation policies and actions will probably come up. So we can navigate to page 81. Um, and yes, we can see some of the different policies and actions we have related to um, safe routes to school. So we can see that here and you can also navigate to this page um, on your own. Are there any specific questions related to the health and safety section? Um, again, this is in the public facilities and services element of the plan. Questions?
Okay. Oh, sorry. Not, not yet, Janet. Uh, you should probably continue and I'll flag if other questions come up. Okay. Just wanted to pause and check. Um, so let's Thank see. You. Yeah, this is a really important section and it goes hand in hand with um, our physical infrastructure uh, sections like the public utilities and transportation sections of the plan. So next we have our economy and housing section. These are actually two separate sections. The economy uh, element is a chapter and housing can be found at the end of our sustainable development and resilient communities um, chapter. It's the second to the last element. Um, let's see. Navigate to this. Again, similar structure for economy. So yeah, the uh, this section really focuses on our county's economic and um, housing objectives, which are intended to help us achieve the high level goals that are laid out in the plan. The economic chapter begins um, in section seven here, and it really contains the types of programs and plans for our economic development locally, access to education and workforce training opportunities, uh, sustainable agriculture and food systems, and regenerative tourism. So you can see here, we have some economic trends that have been updated so um, and are continuing to be updated. So in the next version of this plan, we'll probably have some different numbers and statistics here. Uh, we have some challenges, some economic challenges and opportunities listed on the next page. And here is our uh, broad economic goal that covers a lot. Um, but in this first section, this first objective, we cover um, access to all levels of education and workforce training. And here are some actions related to economic development. And again, we are really trying to um, emphasize innovation and resiliency. How can we do things differently to promote economic development and growth um, on Hawaii Island? Um, and then further in the economic section, we get into agriculture and food systems. Um, we talk about, we have a goal for this section. So after the introductory text here, we have a goal related to agriculture and food systems. And then we have um, a few objectives related to um, how do we support active food production in the appropriate areas. And these are some actions related to that. A lot of interagency coordination between county and state. This objective is speaking to agriculture infrastructure and how do we um, improve that through different programs and coordination. And um, the last section of the economic chapter is about the visitor industry. So here we have some introduction We have our visitor industry goal, which really speaks to how do we achieve um, that balance between a high quality of life for our residents and visitors. So um, really speaking to the preservation of our natural and cultural resources and how we can promote um, a visitor industry that supports that. So we have a few objectives related directly to um, regenerative tourism. You can see we have some different actions that speak to the programs and projects that will help us achieve that objective. Well, another hot topic that we get in relation to um, our economic objectives is how are we prioritizing local agriculture and food production? We 
And so we can use our search tool and navigate to the different um, sections of the plan that speak to that. So really talking about supporting urban agriculture, um, innovative agriculture projects and expanding our local agriculture industry. And there's several pages here that we can go to to explore that more. Yeah, this tool, um, this search tool is really handy. Um, if there are there any questions about the economic section so far, and then I'll jump into housing. Uh, not in the Q and A just yet. Um, so I think we can continue. I'll keep my eye on the Q and A. Okay, great. So if we jump down to housing, we can just go quickly into the document. And again, the housing section is actually in the Sustainable Development and Resilient Communities chapter. It's at the very, or a second to last. So it's right here. Again, we start off with introduction and um, some statistics about our housing inventory and some demographic trends. And we get into the different housing challenges and opportunities. Um, and then we have a housing goal, um, which covers a lot. And we have three objectives under housing. So the first is really about diversifying and expanding housing. And um, we have different policies and actions related to that. And then our next objective is really focused on managing the existing housing stock. And again, policies and actions. And the third objective is about creating a housing affordability. Um, we define how we're using that term in the plan and we have policies and actions that follow this objective. Uh, again, it's a lot of coordination with our different departments that um, have a key role in creating housing on the island. So that's important to know. We've started to kind of visualize how that would work in the plan. And um, that's also part of the implementation section about how the different agencies will collaborate on some of these objectives. And we also have these affordable housing character guidelines. Um, these are just general um, characteristics that we would like to see in different housing developments in the future. So this kind of gets into that. Okay, any questions related to housing? Uh, so Chad, it's there, uh, not yet on housing, but Cindy asked about how do we control the tourism footprint? Yes, that's a great question. Um, there's different mechanisms for influencing the visitor industry on island. I think we actually have some, some policies and actions related to how we get visitors to have more of an authentic experience here. So pointing them to um, having more education around historic and cultural sites on the island. Um, so we, we kind of get into that. We have policies on creating partnerships with organizations and um, community groups that are already working on that. So that's also in the plan. This section is really about how do we create those partnerships and how do we how do we reimagine tourism um, prior to COVID because we've learned a lot from COVID and even prior to, to COVID, we've learned a lot. So we're kind of integrating those lessons learned um, and really focusing on how can we prioritize the quality of life for residents on the island while um, having a viable uh, visitor industry here. I hope that answers, but Bethany, um, if I miss something, you can definitely let me know. No, I think you did great. And I think um, as you can read the goal, it's really about um, that balance and making sure that we are looking at responsible 
um, visitation in that. Thanks, Bethany and Janice. Uh, Brad is asking, so back to housing, uh, is the GP considering alternative housing options like housing trusts, land trusts? Yes, I believe we do speak to innovative housing. Um, so we're definitely looking at addressing that missing middle um, group and how we can uh, integrate more innovative solutions to housing. Um, let's see, try, try to find a specific one. Okay, so yeah, we talk about prioritizing new housing um, near urban growth areas and mixed use developments. Um, we're also supporting experimental housing um, and different green building types um, in accordance with our state law. Um, yeah, so I I believe that um, in each objective, we, we call out the need to diversify through innovation. So that's definitely addressed in here. Thanks, Janice. And I think as Bethany mentioned, uh, the AI chat is one maybe to also uh, okay. use, Brad. And then uh, if, if, you, if the specific language you're, not, you're looking for is not there, definitely add in that as a comment to conveil. So I know you're also asking about and I sort of saw you scroll past it, Janice, but is there any policy that incentivizes maintaining and preserving existing older homes? Hmm. See that question. I think this is a great example on how we can utilize this search tool. So according to the tool, yes, um, we have a policy in the housing element that incentivizes the rehab and adaptive reuse of existing buildings rather than demolition in urban areas. Actually, I believe this is in the land use section. So you can see that there's definitely a lot of connection points in the plan. So it may not be in housing, but you can find um, some answers to your questions in other elements like land use, for example, in this in this specific case. Yeah. Yep, thanks Janice. And then we have another question. Does the GP address the improved efficiency and speed of me, building permits as part of an effort to expand housing? Um, I think we do. Um, I'm not sure the exact language that we use, but um, I'm pretty sure that's in our housing our housing section about maybe diversifying and expanding housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Janice, like, that's like another one. Again, we can just type into the search uh, function. Um, you can just put building permits even and see what pops up. Um, sometimes you don't even have to ask a question. You can just put in a term and see um, what information we get. Oh, that's interesting. No I feel like we definitely talk about I maybe <laughs> in regards to like efficiency, but like we talk yeah. about permitting, um definitely. So maybe that's another way to ask that question. Let's just see. Maybe a little more general might produce. Yeah. Oh, oh I, interesting. yeah, it's interesting. I don't maybe we framed it in a way that being more coordinated with the Department of Public Works or other like the Office of Housing maybe we kind of framed it that way but yeah interesting I thought it would it might be in our actions because we get a little more specific on how we plan anyway, to carry these yeah out. I think this yeah. is an important thing uh, um, to, to put add as a comment into the plan uh, so that it maybe explicitly calls it out 
Um, so yeah, so yeah, thanks for thanks for bringing that up. I think it's critical to have. Yeah, that's great. That's a great um comment to make in the plan. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, so this was housing. Again, it's in the Sustainable Development and Resilient Communities chapter. Uh, I think our last our last station is called Integrated Systems. So this is actually a new element of the plan that did not exist before. Um, and it really came from uh, the public input during the 2019 draft. So we listened and we tried to create an element of this plan that speaks to the need uh, for our government agencies to effectively communicate, work together, and share information. So it's a great short chapter, and I encourage everyone to go check it out because I don't think there's a bunch of comments in this particular element yet. Um, so yeah, integrated systems basically refers to um, a network of connection of connected systems that allow our government agencies to share information effectively and to communicate. Um, so this section is really intended to hold our government accountable for its various processes and functions. Um, again, it's a very basic type of structure. We have some introduction text here, why we need this, why we need um, our government systems to be integrated and coordinated for all these great things. And we have one integrated systems goal um, that highlights efficiency, equity, and organization in order to serve the public. We have a few objectives. I think we have three. So this first one really focuses on collaboration and cooperation. Um, these are the policies that allow us to work toward this objective. Um, and then the next objective really talks about the fiscal integrity and responsibility um, and efficiency in order to do things like provide a balanced budget um, and allocate resources effectively and equitably. We have a few actions here that get a little more specific on how we plan to achieve these things. And the last objective in this section is about um, achieving equity in basically all that we do as a county in our different programs, our different policies, and how we allocate resources. Again, we have some priority actions related to this. Okay, so we can actually use our search function and a hot topic that's been coming up um, from the community is say how will the government ensure collaboration. So there's different pages that you can find some information related to this on, but really it's uh, the plan emphasizes that collaboration will be done by promoting alignment and consolidation of our state and county functions. It gets really complex um, as a lot of different agencies are involved in the different uh, processes that we have. So really trying to align um, align different agencies on various projects that the county is involved in. How do we maintain and adequately fund our different services? That's also key to this, to ensuring collaboration. Um, how do we uh, embrace the adoption of new technology across our county agencies? This would really help with our efficiency and being able to serve the public um, in a more efficient manner. Um, and also how do we enhance our community engagement through different programs and initiatives so that we can actually form stronger partnerships between county departments and agencies and the community. Because oftentimes there's a disconnect. So we're looking to build those bridges. And then again, these are the pages that you can navigate to to, to learn more.
Um, yeah, this section goes hand in hand with the implementation, which is a separate chapter in the plan. So integrated systems is actually at the very end of sustainable development and resilient communities. We have, we have it right after housing. And then we get into economy. And then the plan implementation is actually found at the end. But integrated systems is a mechanism for the county to be able to implement the plan and work across every department. So they go together. Um, yeah, thanks, Janet. Yeah. Um, uh, I asked if you could speak up a little and then- Sorry. Uh, no, uh, might just be the placement of your mic. Uh, but I'm to ask, uh, is there any consideration on how different counties interpret the HRS cons consistently, and uh, not just the alignment of state and county, but also among the counties? Well, let me check out that question. I can, I can try to address that a little bit. Um, HRS is the Hawaii Revised Statute, so that's our state uh, laws, and each county then um, can create laws within that framework to be more specific um, to, to their needs and issues. And so um, just like our general plan is required in the state law, every county then has a general plan, um, but that's up to that county to decide exactly how they want to, um, to create that plan and, and operationalize that. So there is a little bit of, um, uh, each county does things a little bit differently according to what their community needs, but ultimately HRS um, and the revised statutes really guide um, the framework under which the county operates. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Yeah. Just uh, as a heads up, to be mindful of everyone's time, you're at 6.50, so I, I know there's still a question from Chuck about the implementation, so just wanted to flag that. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Brent. Uh, let's see. Chuck asked, has there been an estimate of time and money that is required in order for the county administration or consultants to implement the projects? In other words, is it feasible to implement them? That's a great question, Chuck. Um, we have not done any estimate of um, money, certainly, but what we have been doing is working with the department's um, to really um, understand some of their priorities. And so if you look at the implementation, um, Janice, if you wouldn't mind going to that um, phases chart in the implementation chapter. Um, this is one of the ways that we've been working with um, people to understand and also to help us sort of manage um, implementation of this plan. So um, before you would have a whole list of things that you just need to implement across all the time. And now we're really trying to phase them out about what are those priority um, priority one things that need to get done first, and then um, move on across there through the phases. Um, as far as funding goes, it, it ultimately, you know, we've We've had some conversations with our uh, finance department, certainly on this, and there are capital projects that we need. We know that we need to get done, and so looking at you know how do we um, phase um, different bonds in order to move forward with those priorities, um, but then also there's a lot of programmatic needs and um, organizational needs that we need to address that don't cost a lot of. Um, money necessarily, but will take some time. So you'll see that phase one really focusing on the code amendments that need to happen to be in alignment with the plan, um, looking at community development plan updates that are needed, um, functional plans. So this is sort of getting our house in order for phase one and then um, moving forward through there with um, specific projects. So no, not a study that has been done, but definitely been thinking about, you know, what's feasible. It's very important that this plan can be implemented. So we think that this phasing approach is the best way to really um, tackle that issue. Thanks for that, Bethany. Sure. Was that the only question on implementation, Brent? 
Uh, so far, yeah. Okay. So since it's six fifty two, I will navigate us back to the about page. This is the main general plan landing site. Um, and just quickly go over uh, opportunities to get involved in this comprehensive review and update. So the comment period has been extended to March 1st of 2024. So you can feel free to enter in comments, um, suggestions, recommendations, and you can click this button to do so. You can also check out our YouTube for any tutorials or, or how to's. We held public informational workshops in Kona and Hilo on the last weekend of September and the first weekend of October. So those have been completed. And we held an online workshop last Tuesday, and this is the second one. Um, these are being recorded, so they will be posted to our YouTube channel, and you can check it out there. We've also been hosting roadshow presentations where community groups will invite us in and we give a brief presentation, hand out flyers and share information. And we've also been conducting sort of the same format of sharing information at various community events around the island. So if there's a big planned um, community event, we have tried to attend and provide information there. So the next one will actually be this Saturday at Revitalize Puna. So please come and um, engage with us. And uh, again, Conveo has a lot of the resources that we just shared tonight. And just to add to that real quick, Janice, and then we'll open up for any last Q&A. Um, we also are trying to um, promote our social media platforms. So you'll see information um, coming out on our Facebook page and our Instagram page. I think we have a LinkedIn as well that we're sharing. And then um, we do have a mailing list. So if you um, aren't on that mailing list, please contact us so that we can get you on, get you on there so that you get updated information, such as this extended comment period information that went out today. And you can join that um, through this Cambio site as well. Any, any last Q&A, Brent? Uh, if folks are getting props, uh, should I also launch the poll before folks start dropping off? Yes, please. I'll launch the poll. Thanks, Chuck and Santa, for your folks' uh, compliments to the team. Uh, he's also asking, how can I get on the mailing list? Oh, uh, there is on the online informational workshop page. Um, maybe Kara can drop it in the chat if anyone missed it. There is at the bottom of the page, there is a tab to join the mailing list. Um, and it's also found on our, this same link is also found on our planning department website. You can join there as well. Yep, thanks for that, Janet. So we're getting uh, responses trickling in. Thanks to the 13 folks who stuck it out uh, the whole uh, session. Um, so we're getting an array of usefulness, weighted more on the useful side. That's good. And um, in terms of the plan relatability, uh, a mix of answers weighted towards relatable. <laughs> I think again. Um, positive. 10 out of 12 of folks dated 10 out of 11 now. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if you folks want to have any closing remarks. Uh, uh, Susan's also saying thank you. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate everybody's time tonight. I know it's hard on evenings when you've got dinner and families and things to attend to, but appreciate this. Um, ask if you can help us get the word out. We will be sharing. Um, this will be posted on our YouTube channel so anybody can view it and um, participate. And we're really trying to sort of boost um, information out there. So tell your friends, 
tell your neighbors, um, tell your family members to come get involved. And it's as easy as, you know, as you could see from the search function, um, just an asking a question. Uh, you don't have to certainly scroll through the entire document unless you are inclined to do so. Um, we're also available, um, we have hard copies available in our offices if people um, want to review those as well. And we welcome uh, any questions or um, technology issues people have so that we can make sure that this is accessible. Thank you so much.